That's 1-800-708-6637. Good morning, America. Breaking news, state of emergency. The Gulf Coast bracing for a new hurricane. Louisiana to Florida on alert as Tropical Storm Nate marches north. Residents already evacuating. The storm turning deadly, pounding Central America. Now the Gulf Coast facing up to a foot of rain, flash floods, and an eight-foot storm surge. The shooter's secret life. New details about the gunman, what he was doing in those final hours before the Vegas massacre and the new clues inside that hotel room and why authorities now think Chicago and Boston were also in his sights. Blockbuster allegations. Harvey Weinstein, the movie mogul behind some of Hollywood's biggest hits, accused of decades of sexual harassment in a bombshell new report. The women coming forward include superstar Ashley Judd. Now this morning, the lawyer famous for defending women is here to defend him. And banding together to help hurricane victims. Some of the biggest stars in the world, Jennifer Lopez, Mark Anthony, and more, releasing a brand new song overnight. Now the man behind it, Hamilton creator Lynn Manuel Miranda, is here first on GMA. Live in Times Square, this is GMA with Robin Roberts, George Stephanopoulos, and Michael Strahan. Good morning, America, and how about that spirit from Lin-Manuel Miranda? He is going to be here live all to help out Puerto Rico. Yeah, this new music set to Maria from West Side Story, mm -hmm. if you can hear that, but it's got the flavor of the islands that are in so much need right now. Mm -hmm. Using his talent to raise money to help out other people. And he Love brought it. his dad here with him this morning, he too. Made so him this morning. Excited about that. And there are millions bracing this morning as well because Tropical Storm Nate strengthening in the Caribbean right now, heading right towards the Gulf Coast. And states of emergency have already been declared in Louisiana, Alabama, and Florida. And the storm is forecast to become a hurricane before it makes landfall this weekend. It's already deadly, claiming at least 22 lives across Central America. Our chief meteorologist, Ginger Z, of course, tracking it all. Good morning, Ginger. Good morning to you, George. We're watching Nate right now just south and east of the Yucatan Peninsula, but it is moving fast. At 14 miles per hour, it'll cook to the north and northwest. We'll put the path on here for you just to give you an idea of what's happening. That hurricane watch includes Cancun and Cozumel. That's for tonight through early tomorrow. Because it's moving so fast, it goes into the Gulf, and by tomorrow night, that's when the effects start to be felt along the Gulf Coast. New Orleans, Biloxi, Gulfport, Mobile, over to Pensacola, all in the watches and advisories. The impacts are huge here. Four to eight feet of storm surge up to a foot of rain. And that's why we're most concerned, especially in New Orleans, where Steve Osinsami is this morning. Uh, good morning to you, Ginger. There is, of course, that talk that this city could see up to a foot of rain all at once. And that has all eyes in this city on these, the drainage pumps that keep this city dry. Believe it or not, this one is actually working, but there are a dozen of these pumps across the city that are not, and three of them are considered major. The storm that's coming is already catastrophic. Nearly two dozen people are dead this morning in Central America after roads and homes were flooded. In some areas, they're expecting nearly 30 inches of rain. In Florida, Louisiana, and Alabama, city and state officials are already declaring a state of emergency this morning. There is potential for this storm to intensify very quickly. Families sick and tired of these terrible storms this hurricane season have to get it together again, clearing store shelves of water and other supplies. It's hard to imagine experiencing another storm right now. We all have to be prepared. In the Louisiana bayous, not protected by levees, they're under a mandatory evacuation this morning. You need to be where you want to be by dark on Saturday. They're going to start giving sandbags to families today. They're going to be available at local fire stations. Back to you guys in New York. All right, Steve, thanks so much. We're turning now to the new developments in the Las Vegas shooting overnight. Thousands gathered at a vigil for Charleston Hartfield, an off-duty police officer who died saving lives at the Route 91 Harvest Festival. And this morning, we're now learning more about the gunman, Stephen Paddock. Investigators trying to determine if he was scouting targets in Boston and Chicago. And they're also uncovering more about his secret life. Our chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross, is here with all of those details. Good morning, Brian. Well, good morning, Amy. Officials this morning say Las Vegas prostitutes have provided perhaps the most telling profile of Stephen Paddock, known by them as a regular customer, a man without emotion and cheap, except it seems when it came to his plans for mass murder. Paddock spared no expense in the attack, even considering travel to other targets in Chicago and Boston. 
According to law enforcement officials, he booked rooms but never checked in at Chicago's Blackstone Hotel in August, the same dates as the Lollapalooza Festival across the street in Grant Park, attracting hundreds of thousands of people, including one of President Obama's daughters. Officials also tell ABC News he conducted a Google search for hotels around Fenway Park in Boston. The ballpark's capacity, nearly 38,000 people. Instead, he stayed close to home, where there was nothing cheap about his attack preparations. Experts say the weapons found in his hotel suite were high-end and high-powered, the kind used by U.S. Special Forces and commandos. Officials tell ABC News some of the ammo was bought under a name not his, leading to speculation of a possible accomplice. There's people that know this individual. There's people that could help us understand this individual. And the FBI got some insight about Paddock from an unlikely place, the Reno car dealership where he bought this car on August 1st, paying cash with a check for $14,411, not a sign of someone with financial problems. Mary Lou even wanted to get a Lexus, but he was like, I'm not going to spend $10,000 more for a car that's got the exact same equipment. And when Danley went on a test drive, she told the salesperson that Paddock had saved her from a troubled marriage. She said she had a, a bad relationship prior to him and how he had, you know, turned her life around and really helped her out. After a full day of questioning on Wednesday by the FBI, officials this morning say they still have more questions for Mary Lou Danley, who maintains she had no idea her live-in boyfriend was making plans to kill so many people. And Brian, what about the other woman, this mystery woman we've heard so much about who may have spent some of those final days with Paddock? Have we learned anything more about who that is? Authorities believe she was a lady of the evening, one of many who knew Mr. Paddock well. All right, Brian, thank yeah. you. Thanks, Brian. We're going to get new details now about the Gummins final hours in that hotel before the rampage. More on that from our senior national correspondent, Matt Gutman, who got that aerial view of the room. Good morning, Matt. Good morning, George. And from the air, you really get a sense of the scope of this massacre, those deadly bullets flying hundreds of yards, but also the sense of the scale of this investigation. Now, that forensic work we got to see from the sky is pretty much all investigators have to try to piece together a motive here because Stephen Paddock left behind no manifesto, no suicide note, no phone calls. This morning, a view inside Stephen Paddock's sniper's nest from the sky. A helicopter bringing us to the Las Vegas Strip. Inside one shattered window, we see pillows stacked high on a stripped bed. The other window partially blocked by plywood. But inside, investigators still carefully dissecting the scene Thursday. Our flight following the bullet's path right over that concert venue. Still a very active crime scene. When you look down in there, you see evidence of what was this family-friendly festival. There are hundreds and hundreds of lawn chairs, strollers, walkers, drinks still on tables, and then it looks like it was hit by a tornado. FBI forensics teams, shoulder to shoulder, painstakingly scouring the site, right there, marking evidence with spray paint. Stephen Paddock's storm of bullets traveling an incredible distance, at least a thousand yards. And on the ground, it sowed chaos. Responders jumping into action, helping to evacuate crowds unable to process the horror. Run, those are stopped! Run, don't walk! And this morning, we're learning more about the heroic actions of bystanders. This video shot by Ray Page, who went back to get his truck, which was parked nearby, driving it right into the kill zone, turning that white pickup into a makeshift ambulance. Do we have any other wounded people we need to take? Not right now. Ray Page driving them back up this trip to paramedics unable to get into the fire zone. I got five wounded. I'm shot one in the chest here. This morning, we also learn more about Paddock's final hours. The night before the shooting, sources tell ABC News Paddock reportedly calling in two noise complaints about guests staying in the room below him. Floyd Conradi was staying in the room immediately beneath one of Paddock's sniper's nests. And at what point did you begin to notice that something was wrong? About the third volley of shots. And as those forensics teams continue to comb the site, family members beginning to say their final farewells. Jamie Robinson lost her beloved baby brother, Cameron. He was just 28. Does part of you ever wish that you could have been there with him? I wish I could have taken his place because he had so much going for him. And I would have given my life and heartbeat for him to go on. 
and it's simply so gutting to be with the victim's family members. And until now, this city has really just been in a state of shock. But now the morning has begun. You can see this memorial that was set up just yesterday, 58 crosses, each one of them with the names of the victims, pictures, candles, and flowers. And even at this early hour, you can see that there are people here paying their respects. Now, the memorials and the funerals begin next week. Guys. Wow. Mm. What a powerful uh, image right there. So haunting. And another powerful image is this photo that was shared so many times by, by so many people. It's showing a hero shielding a woman from the gunfire. What well, the U.S. Army has now confirmed the man in the photo is soldier Matthew Kobos. And they called him the epitome of the American soldier. Oh, and um, really selfless. powerful. Yeah, that gives powerful you chills image. to see the heroism oh, there. Yeah. Oh, thanks for sharing that. And um, you know we have a programming note. ABC News in 2020 will air a special document, documentary pre presentation tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern on the heroism amid the tragedy, what happened in Vegas. It airs tonight at 10 Eastern, 9 Central, right here on ABC. And in the wake of the Las Vegas shooting, calls are growing now to restrict the devices called bump stocks. Those were used on a dozen of Stephen Paddock's guns, virtually turning them into automatic weapons. Right now, they are perfectly legal to buy. Our senior justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, has more on that story. Good morning, Pierre. Amy, good morning. The carnage in Las Vegas has left many in the country soul searching. And there's something we haven't seen in the wake of recent mass shootings. Bipartisan dialogue about gun control and the NRA actively engaged. After the tragedy in Las Vegas, Republicans who often reject discussions of gun control at least willing to talk. Fully automatic weapons have been um, outlawed for many, many years. So obviously we need to look at how we can uh, tighten up the compliance uh, with this law. And now this from the NRA. We ought to take a look at that, see if it's in compliance with federal law, and it's worthy of additional regulation. That being said, we didn't say ban, we didn't say confiscate. An issue the gun accessory called a bump stock, which effectively allows a semi-automatic rifle to fire at about the same pace as a machine gun. Half of Las Vegas shooter Stephen Paddock's 23-gun arsenal stashed in his hotel room were rigged with bump stocks, effectively allowing him to fire 400 to 800 rounds per minute. Thursday night, President Trump asked if the accessory should be banned. We'll be looking into that over the next short period of time. Some outlets have already pulled bump stocks from their online inventory, including Walmart and Cabela's, an outdoor retailer. Talk of additional restrictions now has these items flying off the shelves. A lot of people have been calling in uh, to buy those because they're sure they're going to be outlawed. In just two days, the price of an AR-15 bump stock jumped from $124 on this site to more than $2,000 and counting on this online auction. Exactly how many have been sold, we don't know. These devices are not really regulated, so no one can tell you. That's incredible. All right, thanks, Pierre. Okay, thank you, Pierre. We're near to the White House now, where we've learned that President Trump is expected to decertify the landmark nuclear deal with Iran next week. And overnight, the president raised a lot of eyebrows with this comment about the military leaders he invited to the White House. Take a look. Do you guys know what this represents? What? Tell us, sir. Uh, maybe it's the calm before the storm. What's the storm? Could be the calm, the calm before the storm. What storm is the president? You'll find out. Let's bring in our senior White House correspondent, Cecilia Vega, for more on this. Now, Cecilia, you can look at it one way and say that's a very ominous comment from the president. It may mean nothing, nothing at all, though. So what is the White House telling you? Well, George Cricket's here, but you're right. I mean, this could be President Trump being President Trump. He certainly likes to talk and make comments like this. Uh, but, but it is a cryptic comment, given a number of the diplomatic issues that this administration is dealing with right now, with Iran, as you mentioned, and North Korea. The press was summoned in for that event last night at the last minute because the president wanted to have this photo documented with all those top military leaders there. You heard reporters ask specifically, are you talking about ISIS? Are you talking about North Korea, Iran? What storm are you talking about? The president said, we will find out. You can bet, George. I'll be asking about this one at the briefing today. No question about that. We do know the president wants to decertify this Iran nuclear deal next week. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be abandoned. 
No, not at all, George. But what this does mean is that the president is essentially contradicting many of his top military advisors. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, Defense Secretary Jim Mattis have both said that the U.S. should stay in this deal with Iran. Um, uh, and Mattis this week said that, uh, that this deal is in the best interest of America. Essentially what this decertification would do is kick it back to Congress to decide whether to impose tough new sanctions on Iran. And i got to say, sources here caution us this is not a done deal until the president speaks about it publicly. He might do that. He's right. expected to do that next week. And George. our allies but, will not go along with it either. Finally, Steve Mnuchin, Treasury Secretary, also has some plane issues. $800,000 in, in private tra in military travel since the spring. Treasury Department concluding it's not illegal but not necessarily appropriate either. Yeah, exactly right. We're talking about seven trips since he took this job. Uh, about $44,000 for one trip to a day trip to Miami. George, the president is going to meet with Mnuchin here at the White House today. Cecilia Vega, thanks very much. Michael? All right, thank you, George. We're going to turn now to the new developments in that NFL fallout. Overnight, Panthers quarterback Cam Newton broke his silence, apologizing for those comments he made to a female reporter. ABC's Paula Ferris is here with more. Good morning, Paula. Good morning to you, Michael. And that social media apology took nearly 28 hours, but it was sincere heartfelt and unscripted. At one point, he invoked his two young daughters, saying that he tries to instill in them that they can do and be anything that they want to be. And he learned through this entire process that the joke was on him. Overnight, more than 24 hours after the firestorm began. After careful thought, I understand that my word choice was extremely degrading and disrespectful to women. An apology from Cam Newton, tweeted to his one million followers. I'm a father to two beautiful daughters, and at their age, I try to instill in them that they can do and be anything that they want to be. To the daughters, the sisters, and the women all around the world, I sincerely apologize and hope that you can find the kindness in your heart to forgive me. His message of regret, all because of this exchange with a female reporter. Devin Funches has seemed to really embrace the physicality of his routes and, and making, getting those extra yards. Does that give you a little bit of an enjoyment to see him kind of truck sticking people out there? It's funny to hear a female talk about routes. Like, it's funny. And now the fallout from that press conference fumble taking a financial toll. New Dannon Oikos Triple Zero is my go-to protein snack. Dannon, the maker of Oikos, saying it will no longer work with Newton, pulling all of his ads. And Gatorade calling his comments disrespectful to all women. Sports commentators calling it sexist. You're assuming because she's a female, she couldn't possibly know what's going on. The reporter at the center of it all, Jordan Rodriguez, was back on the job at Panthers practice on Thursday, but not commenting. Now, that entire apology was one minute, 45 seconds long, asking people to find it in the kindness of their heart to forgive him. But it's going to be hard for people to watch that and question the authenticity of his contrition. You could tell he really felt it, but there was a lot of pressure on him right, sure to issue that. He has two daughters, though, and he so does. that does give some validity. He has to know what it feels like through his daughter's eyes. He has to, and a lot of people say, let's not let this damper everything else he's done because he's done so much for the community. It did seem real. Yeah, yeah. It does a lot for the community, and it takes a lot to apologize. <laughs> it does. Good. Thank we'll you, Paula. Something like this. We're going to head back now to Ginger, who has more on Tropical Storm Nate and how it will impact the U.S. Mm -hmm. Starting tomorrow, the rainfall is going to be big. And that, remember, up to a foot right along the Gulf Coast, including New Orleans, is in the forecast. But it still goes up through Mississippi, northern Alabama, central Tennessee, and right there into Kentucky, up to six inches. Your local weather in 30 seconds. First, though, the weekend getaway is brought to you by My Little Pony, rated PG. If you or someone you love is experiencing extreme laughter, <laughs> Do you want to talk about it? Severe moments of overexcitement. What is happening? Dizziness. This is amazing. Yahoo! Or euphoria. <laughs> it's only pony fever. What do I do? Oh, group hug. Now. Oh, uh, yeah. Catch it. Best escape plan ever. My Little Pony, the movie. Rated PG. Now playing in theaters. 
Well, as we round out the week, today's going to be our last really nice day with temperatures topping out in the lower to mid 80s and a milder start too. So fair amount of sunshine. We'll have those sunglasses on. Tomorrow we'll start to pick up some clouds, maybe even a stray shower during the afternoon and evening. Better chance of rain comes Sunday during your afternoon and evening. And those temperatures will really come down Monday and Tuesday time period. We'll start to get some of the rain out ahead of a cold front and rain from Nate. So it is looking fairly wet. And coming up, the blockbuster new report accusing movie mogul Harvey Weinstein of sexual harassment. Now, famous women's rights lawyers here live. Why she's defending Mr. Weinstein this morning. Oats seem pretty simple, right? They're actually kind of.